first off, uh, thank you everyone for being here. This is uh, amazing, and uh, uh, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Winchester Ammunition Booth. Uh, first and foremost, we just want to say thank you to uh, everyone who took part. Uh, just, I need to catch my breath. After walking through the aisle and just seeing the response, uh, as it should be, for our World War II veterans who are sitting in front of us, it was amazing. Um, for that, uh, how about a round of applause? Sure. So, th this was all put together. Uh, Dale True with the Indy Honor Flight. Uh, we called him a couple months ago, and we, we really wanted to find a way to recognize our World War II veterans. Um, so he he has done a tremendous job. I just want to say thank you to Dale and his organization. Uh, you probably heard some drumming on the way in. They were spectacular. So the uh, the uh, Circle City Bucket Drummers. How about them? Pretty good. So today we have five World War II veterans in front of us, and uh, you're going to hear a little bit about each one here in a little bit. Uh, we've got some different people coming up, and I really just want to make sure that you have an opportunity to meet them today. They'll be here. Uh, we also have a number of our Team Winchester people here. Just, again, a celebration of what they've accomplished, what they've given up uh, for our freedom. And uh, there's many, many veterans, many roaming the halls, and, and honestly, uh, we couldn't be more thankful for everything that they do for us on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but today, uh, specifically, we want to pay, pay honor to our World War II veterans. So, uh, one more, obviously, thing to mention here. So we have the Indianapolis Metro Police Department Honor Guard. Um, so they are uh, carrying the Stars and Stripes. I would just like to, uh, again, thank them for everything. I was told by Dale, however, that they do have an early exit because they're actually supposed to be working right after this. So uh, we just want to say thank you, and uh, you, are, you are welcome to head back to your uh, obligations. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first uh, speaker. So Mark Yackley is to my right. Uh, Mark Yackley is actually, he's been with uh, the Marine Corps for 20 plus years. Uh, his family, they're actually here uh, as well. So Becky and the boys, uh, they are competitive shooters. Mark, he shoots all over the world, as does the, uh, the entire family. But uh, Mark, he uh, can come to the stage. We've been honored today to have these veterans here who gave so much and sacrificed so much uh, for all of us. And we just wanted to take a chance to say thank you. And uh, the first veteran that we're going to talk about <laughs> is Mr. Roger Newcomb. He's just celebrated his 92nd birthday. In 1945, as a high school student in Logansport, Indiana, and a part-time worker for the railroad, he enlisted in the Army at the age of 18. During World War II, he served in the Army 311th Regiment, 78th Division, and the 29th Infantry Regiment. He was also selected as a trumpet player for the 431st Army Services Band in Germany, which provided much-needed musical motivation for the troops. As a member of the Greatest Generation, he returned to the States, attended Indiana University, and served as a treasurer in Phi Sigma Kappa fraternity. He later started Taylor Newcomb Engineering, from which he is retired. Roger married the love of his life, Jane, in 1956, and he was honored by Indy Honor Flight number 27. Please give a big hand for Mr. Roger Newcomb. Uh, Mr. William Fisher. He was born in Indianapolis December 17, 1924. He began basic training in July 1943 at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Bill entered the war in Europe at Glasgow, Scotland and was assigned as a replacement with the 294th Combat Engineer Battalion. 
heading for the D-Day invasion. Aboard the Susan B. Anthony, his ship hit a mine and sunk. All were rescued and they later landed on Utah Beach, D-Day plus one. The engineers worked on repairing roads, mine sweeping, and building or rebuilding bridges. At the end of the war, Bill's unit ended up guarding German prisoners in Berlin who were working on the new Allied headquarters. PFC Fisher saw the Bob Hope show in Berlin before he left Germany on Christmas Day, 1945. He was discharged from the U.S. Army in January 1946 and returned to Indianapolis. He was honored by Indy on her flight number five. Let's give it a hand for Mr. William Fisher. Our next honored veteran is Wayne Saucerman. He was born in Sullivan County, Indiana, May 1st, 1926. He entered the U.S. Marine Corps on April 24th, 1944, and completed basic training at Paris Island, South Carolina. After advanced infantry training, he went to Hawaii and was assigned to the 4th Marine Division. He volunteered for the Scout and Sniper Platoon with the 24th Regiment. On January 1st, 1945, the 4th Marine Division left Hawaii for Iwo Jima. On February, February 19th, 1945, his division landed on Iwo Jima. Wayne remained in combat until March 15th when a Japanese bullet entered his right hand and right leg where one bullet still remains today. He spent months of recuperation at different naval hospitals and was discharged at corporal, as, as Corporal December 13th, 1945. He returned to Indiana where he married and raised his family. He was honored by Indy Honor Flight number four. We have Mr. Richard Small. <laughs> Richard was born in Indianapolis on October 7, 1925. He enlisted in the U.S. Army in late 1943 and reported to basic training at Fort Bragg, North Carolina in January of 1944. Richard was trained in basic artillery but was transferred to the infantry at Camp Shelby, Mississippi. He then served as an infantry rifleman with the 65th Infantry Division, Patton's Raiders, and entered Europe at the port of La Havre, France, with his first combat experience at Saderlauden, Germany. He participated in the Rhineland and Central European campaigns and attained the rank of Staff Sergeant. As the war ended, Richard served as an honor guard for General Patton. Richard was discharged in May of 1946 and returned home to Indianapolis, where he finished college, married, and raised his family. He was honored by Indy Honor Flight number two. Dwayne Baker. Dwayne Baker. So Wayne Baker of Stylesville, Indiana. He enlisted in the U.S. Coast Guard in September 1943. He was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, Wayne served on the U.S. Coast Guard Calumet, patrolling the East Coast for enemy submarines. He later transferred to the U.S. Coast Guard Golden Gate on the West Coast and escorted Navy ships back to port at the end of the war. After the war, he returned to Indiana, managed the family farm, and also worked as a mechanic. He and his wife, Martha, raised five children. Mr. Baker still maintains his farmland and is, a, and is a member of Mount Tabor Christian Church and the NRA. He was honored by Indy Honor Flight number 28. So I'd like to uh, bring Dale True with the Indy Honor Flight up just to tell uh, you all a little bit about what they do. Thank you, Jason. Welcome, everybody. And again, let's uh, have another round of applause for living history. <laughs> These gentlemen have all been honored by the Indy Honor Flight. We are one of four hubs in the state of Indiana that do the Honor Flight business, one of 130 plus across the United States. The uh, National Honor Flight Organization um, has traveled over 200,000 veterans absolutely free of charge to our nation's capital to see the memorials that were built in their honor and that's what we do 
So the flight for the veterans, anyone that served in World War II, Korea, or Vietnam during a time of war is eligible for these flights. Uh, so you folks are from all around the country. Uh, go back home, find the uh, hub that's closest to you, and make sure you get an application in for any of your family or friends that served during those wartime experiences for our country. Because what we do is we love our veterans. How about that? <laughs> Again, the trip is 100% free for the veteran. It costs them absolutely nothing. It is something that we do in their honor. And uh, we brought these folks out today so that many of our young folks could recognize those that fought for our freedom 75 plus years ago. The baby of the bunch is 92. I'll let you guys figure out who that is. But uh, they've been around the block a day or two. They are wonderful individuals. And we wanted to give you the opportunity to say hello to them and uh, kind of honor their service from all this time ago. And again, our pleasurable thanks to all of you who served our country in time of war or peacetime. So it's our pleasure to serve. If you guys have any questions about the honor flight, we'll be hanging around as well.